Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody here this morning on this beautiful day that God has given us. And it is a beautiful day. So, let's see. Get to what I'm supposed to be doing. Welcome. Happy Sabbath. <clears throat> um, if we want to take uh, just uh, about 30 seconds and just greet those that are uh, sitting around us um, and wish them a happy Sabbath. Okay, for our announcements, um, please continue to remember Tim Owens and his health, and also please remember Blanche's family um, at this time. Pray for their comfort. Um, fellowship lunch next week. We are planning to have haystacks. There is a sign-up sheet in the foyer, um, for, so we make sure we have everything that we need and not 15 of one and none of something else. Um, no prayer meeting on Tuesday um, till September 13th. Uh, Vivian is traveling. Um, keep her in her prayers with her travels and things like that also. Uh, we are having Bible study on Thursday mornings at 11 a.m. at Carolyn's house. Um, they are going to be studying the sanctuary message. The memory verse for this week is Hebrews 10, 12, and everyone is welcome. Um, major food drive, Sabbath for Pilgrim's Inn. Items needed, canned and dried beans, rice, pasta, canned fruit, canned meat, box entrees. Uh, bring your items to the church and they're collecting them on, are you collecting them before the 17th or just wait till the 17th? Well, they could, they could bring them before, but on the seventh and the 17th, that's the end. Okay. And then I'll be taking them over to them. Okay. So you can bring them up to the church through the 17th of September. Excuse me. Um, men's ministry um, has their spiritual tune-up weekend of September 23rd through 25th. And women's ministry, Fullness of Joy Retreat, down at Nasoka is September 30th, October um, through October 2nd. Um, I think that's all our announcements. Time for our praise service. We talked about praise in Sabbath school. And I want to open, you know, I made the comment, we always have more prayer requests than we have praises. So I want to take a moment here this morning and I want to hear your praises. What are we thankful for? What has God, God done in our lives here recently? Angie? I want to praise God that I'm feeling much, much better. All that congestion just went on and on and on. And I also want to praise God for the service that we had this week for Blanche. The, it was just such a blessing to me. She was a much loved woman, and her legacy is like huge. Yes, yes. That was a beautiful service um, for anybody that was able to be here. Um, Blanche was a special lady and we will miss her during this time that we're not seeing her, but we will see her again. Um, I pray, I, I know not everybody got rain last night. We got rain last night. <laughs> so I praise God to, for the, the rain we had to maybe green up the grass a little bit, tap down some of the dirt and dust. But, you know, that's always, always nice. Um, some of these days have been cooler. I praise God that my air conditioning is finally fixed in my little white car that I use for work. Took a while. We replaced a lot. 
<coughs> but it's fixed. Anybody else? Mark? Yes. <laughs> Amen to that. I'm 63 and sometimes I feel 88. Uh, normal. Okay. Yes. We pray you have safe travels too. Driving or flying? Flying. Ah, okay. Yes. Yes. Wanda, did you have your hand up? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. So praising God is not only being aware of what He's done and doing for us. Sure. One. Excuse me. Go ahead. Okay. I want you and for my church members pray for us because I have a transmission three times a week uh, to the four board. And then uh, for many years we were singing in my program and was a beautiful testimony. Many people was converted just for that song. But uh, last, lately, uh, YouTube uh, played me uh, because I need to pay uh, outdoor rights. What's that mean? Oh, oh, copyrights? Okay. Copyright. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I did not sing. Uh, please, I beg you, if you can pray for us in order that we can come back to the few moments, I appreciate very much. Thank you. Okay. Well, one of my favorite ways of praising God is through music. So I have a song here for you this morning. <coughs> joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Our sun fold like flowers before thee, pale thee as the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and Sadness, drive the dog of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth, and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, blossoming meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depths of happy rest. Thou the Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love of thine. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us joy, the joy divine. Amen. If you will please stand and join us for our call to worship. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, dried and true, with thanksgiving. 
Dear great and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for a beautiful Sabbath day Amen. for this family of Jesus to get together to worship you in song, in, in word, with all the praise that we can muster. We pray that you be with us this service. Thank you for all that you do for us. Continue to strengthen us in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join us for our opening hymn, which is 251, He Lives.
You may be seated. <clears throat> it's now time for our tithes and offering. Our offering this morning is for Carolina youth. <coughs> In the first month of the first year of his reign, he opened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. This comes from 2 Chronicles 29, verse 3. We worship God with our resources because we are in a time of revival. Ellen G. White wrote, a revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. Revival is an invitation to turn away from other gods and acknowledge him as the sole Lord of our lives. The book of Second Chronicles chapter 29 through 31 tells us about the revival during the time of King Hezekiah. The temple was repaired, worship services were restored. Passover was celebrated once again. Levites were reinstalled to ministry. Restoration of true worship was at the heart of true revival. The people's response to the call to revival comprised of a concrete element. Then Hezekiah said, you have now dedicated yourselves to the Lord. Come and bring sacrifices and thank offerings to the temple of the Lord. So the assembly brought sacrifices and thank offerings and all those and all whose hearts were willing brought burnt offerings. Second Chronicles 29, 31. Spiritual revival acknowledges God as Lord and one tangible means is to honor him with our gifts. The story of Zechariah in the New Testament presents giving as a result of true spiritual revival. Before welcoming Jesus as his guest of honor, Zacchaeus was the greediest man in Jericho. He was ready to betray his country, lose his friends, forsake his religion, and sacrifice his reputation for just a little more. However, when salvation entered his house, he was prompted to give more than what he owed. I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Luke 19.8. That was his love response to the love he received from Jesus. We can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. That's really something. We can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. Yeah. The call for spiritual revival is resounding loud in our churches, in this church. This week, we worship with our tithe and regular offerings. Would it show that the revival message has taken root in our hearts? It is all of us in response to all of him. If the deacon would come forward. Please stand and join us in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all from the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son.
to respond to your call of revival through prayers, singing, giving, and, dedic and a dedicated life. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. It is now time for our garden of prayer. Uh, the words are in the bulletin, and we ask that everybody that can, Neil, please do so. And oh dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away. Mighty Father, thank you for looking down on us. Thank you for all that you do for us. We are so blessed and thankful for your grace that you give us, the mercy you give us, the forgiveness that you give us. Thank you for all that you do, even bringing yourself into our lives that we may grow not physically, but emotionally and spiritually. Thank you for hearing our prayers even before we ask them. We pray that you be with those that are in need of prayer. They need your healing. Again, Blanche's family who are hurting and suffering the loss of a mother, a sister, a friend. Thank you for, I pray that you be with Tim and you know what he's gone through and you know his devotion towards you. I pray for a long lasting situation for him that I'm sure you already know what you're going to do. I pray that you be with him, strengthen him, allow him to come back to church. And for those others in the church that are missing because of sickness, illness. I pray that you be with them. Give them strength. Now, Lord, we pray that you be with this service. Fill the sanctuary with your Holy Spirit. Fill Roger with your Holy Spirit and allow the message that he has to deliver touch each and every one of us. And we pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. Now it's time for our scripture reading that comes out of 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Uh, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Okay. Uh, Script, verse 1, 12, 2 and 3. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given us to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. Thank you, Pat. Today I've got a two-part sermon. The first part is a condensed obituary for Blanche because some of us were not able to be here. I want to praise all the church members that made it about two thirds of our church members did make it to the service and it was a blessing. 
Our beloved Blanche was 82 years old. She was at her Fort Mill home on Wednesday, August 17, 2022, surrounded by her whole family when she passed. Blanche was born in Clover, Kings Mountain Township in York County, South Carolina. She was loved dearly by her family, friends, and without a question, by her church family here. On December 15, 1990, Blanche, along with 33 other Christians, became charter members of this Rock Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen. She was a graduate of the Fort Mill High School, class of 1958. She remained close and active with her classmates. The ladies, known as the Pearls, met together and were like sisters to her. Blanche retired as a tax accountant from Carolina Handling and ABF Freightline. She also worked and retired up from Target. Blanche was known to work as many as three jobs at one time to care for the ones she loved. She was the third child of nine siblings. On my last visit with her to drop off some flowers, she told me she was in pain. But she was in peace. Last week, we heard from Denny about God's peace. Amen? Yes. Does everybody remember that sermon? Yes. Hit our hearts, did it? She knew this peace. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here today to hear your word, to grow in your strength, to have the ability to know that you and you alone are king of this universe and that you, Father, will protect us through all things and that we can have peace merely for asking for it from you. We pray in your name. Amen. The sermon today is a vice from Peter and it's out of 2 Peter. I'm not going to call out the quotes because I have a little over 200 of them. So if you want to have the quotes, you can go to 2 Peter and either read it during this time or read it, I prefer, afterwards so that you can listen closely to what he has and then read it. If you go through this 2 Peter's twice, you certainly will learn a lot. You know, as we said, we all really were touched by the sermon last week when Danny talked to us about this peace that we could get from God. Peter will go into more depth on just how you can receive that peace. And in a time like now, I can't think of anything we as a church need more than peace. We are constantly being bombarded with all this upheaval that's going on. For some of us listening to Peter, like Pat, you'll be vindicated. For some of us in here that don't believe people will ever be punished, you will find out from God the truth. I tell you, there's something for every one of us in what Peter has to say to us. God gives us everything we need for life and for holy living. 
He gives it through his great power. As we come to know him better, we learn that he called us to share his own shining greatness and perfect life. Through his shining greatness and his perfect life, he has given us promises. These promises are of great worth and no amount of money can buy them. Through these promises, you can have God's own life in you now. It starts with you putting the sinful things of this world behind you. Trust in God and do so results in peace. Did you hear that? Peace. We can start by doing our best to add holy living and faith to everything we do. Then add to this a better understanding of God's word. As you have a better understanding, you will be able to say no when you need to. If you fall down, get back up. Never give up. Live your life in a godly manner. And as you live in a godly manner, you'll be kind and loving to your brothers and sisters. If you have all these things and keep growing in them, they will keep you from being of no use and having no fruit. When you come to know our Lord Jesus Christ, you will bear good fruit and be able to discern from good and evil. But if you do not have these things, you will be blinded and unable to see far and will be easily deceived. Don't forget, God has saved you from your old life of sin. My brothers, make sure you are among those he has chosen and called out for his own. As long as you do these things, you will not trip and fall. In this way, the road will be made wide open for you and you will go into the holy nation that lasts forever of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who has given his life so you may be saved. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, you already know about these things, but I want to remind us all about them. You are strong in faith. I have watched as we as a church have grown closer to each other. We have also grown closer to God. Amen. Just as with Blanche, I know that all of us will soon be leaving this world. Blanche is a reminder of that fact. Time is short. We must surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And serve him while we have time. The 12 apostles of Christ had nothing to do with man-made stories when they told us about the power of our Lord Jesus Christ and of his coming again. They had seen his great power with their own eyes and they walked with him. When Jesus received honor and shining greatness from God the Father, a voice came to him from the all-powerful God saying, 
This is my much loved son. I am very happy with him. The apostles heard this voice come from heaven when they were with Christ on the holy mountain. All this helps us to know that what the early preachers have said is true. You will be doing well to listen to what they have said. Their words are as light that shine in a dark place. Listen until you understand what they have said. Then it will be like the morning light, which takes away the darkness. And the morning star, Jesus Christ, will rise to shine in your hearts. Understand this first. No part of the holy writing will ever be made up by any man. No part of the holy writings came along because of what man wanted to write. But, only, but holy men who belonged to God spoke what the Holy Spirit told them. We need to watch out for false teachers. There will be false teachers among the people. These will work in secret ways to bring false teachings to you. They will turn against Christ who purchased them with his blood. They will bring death on themselves. Many people will follow their wrong ways. Because of what they do, people will speak bad things against the way of truth. They will tell lies and false stories so they can stay in power. But God judged them long ago and their death and destruction is on the way. We know this because God did not hold back from punishing the angels who sinned, but sent them down to hell. They are to be kept there in a deep hole of darkness until they stand before him who judges them. God did not hold back from punishing the people of the world who sinned long ago. He brought the flood that took the lives of the world of sinners. But Noah was a preacher who lived a godly life. He and his family of seven were only ones God saved. God said, that the city of Sodom and Gomorrah were guilty and he destroyed them with fire. This was to show the people who did not worship God what would happen to them. Lot was taken away from Sodom because he was right with God. He had been troubled by the sins that bad, that bad men did. He saw and heard how the people around him broke the law. Every day, his own soul, which was right with God, was troubled because of their sinful ways. But the Lord knows how to help men who are right with God when they are tempted. He also knows how to keep the sinners suffering for their wrongdoing until the day they can stand before him who will judge them. This is true about those who keep on wanting to please their own bodies and sinful desires and those who will not obey God's laws. 
They want to please themselves and are not afraid when they laugh and say bad things about the powers in heaven. I tell you, angels are greater in strength and power than they. But angels do not speak against the powers before the Lord. God punished sinners in the past and he surely will punish sinners today. Yes, no one is above the law. Men like this are like animals who are not able to think but are born to be caught and killed. They speak bad words against that which they do not understand. They will die in their own sinful ways. This is the pay they will suffer for their sinful lives. They are not ashamed when they sin in the daylight. They are sores and dirty spots among you while they eat and drink big meals with you. Their eyes are full of sexual sins. They never have enough sin. They get weak people to go along with them. Their hearts are always wanting something. They are people who will end up in hell because they have left the right way and have went the wrong way. They have followed the way of Balaam, who was the son of Bor. He loved the money he got for his sin, but he was stopped in his sin. A donkey spoke to him with a man's voice. It stopped this early preacher from going on in his crazy way. Such people are like wells without water. They are like clouds before a storm. The darkest place below has been kept for them. They speak big sounding words which show they are proud. They get men who are trying to keep away from sin to give in to sinful desires of the flesh. They promise that these men will be free, but they themselves are chained to sin. For a man is chained to anything that has power over him. But there are men who have been made free from the sins of the world by learning to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The one who saves and has saved each and every one of us here. But if they do these sins again and are not able to keep from doing them, they are worse than they were before. After knowing the holy law that was given to them, they turned from it. They would have been better for them if they had not known how to be right with God. They are like wise sayings. A dog turns back to what he has thrown up, and a pig that has been washed goes back to rolling in the mud. But I tell you, the world will be destroyed. First of all, I want you to know that in the last days, men will laugh at the truth. Have you heard any laughing? They will follow their own sinful desires. They will say, he promised to come again. Where is he? They will say, since our early fathers died, everything is the same from the beginning of the world. 
but they want to forget that God spoke and the heavens were made long ago. The earth was made out of water and water was all around it. Long ago, the earth was covered with water and it was destroyed. But the heaven we see now and the earth we live on now have been kept by his word. They will be kept until they are to be destroyed by fire. They will be kept until today man stands before God and sinners will be destroyed. Dear friends, remember this one thing. With the Lord, one day is as a thousand years. And 1,000 years are as one day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some people think. He is waiting for us. The Lord does not want one person to be punished forever. He wants all to be sorry for their sins and turn from them. The day of the Lord will come as a robber comes. The heavens will pass away with a loud noise. The sun, the moon, the stars will burn up. The earth and all that is in it will burn up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, you should think about the kind of life you are living. It would be, it should be a holy and godlike life. You should look for the day in which God will come. You should do what you can to make it come soon. At that time, the heavens will be destroyed by fire and the sun and the moon and the stars will melt away with much heat. We are looking for what God has promised, amen? Which are new heavens and a new earth. Only what is right and good will be there. Dear friends, since you are waiting for these things to happen, do all you can to know him and live in peace. You can be sure the long waiting of our Lord is part of his plan to save men from the punishment of sin. God gave our dear brothers, Paul, the wisdom to write about this also. We should cover some of his writings in the future. He wrote about these things in all of his writings some of these things are hard to understand. People who do not have much understanding and some who are not strong in the faith change the meanings of his letters. They do this to the other parts of the whole writing also. They are destroying themselves as they do this. And so, dear friends, now that you know this, watch so you will not be led away by the mistakes of these sinful people. Do not be moved by them. Grow in the loving favor that Christ gives you. Mm -hmm. 
learn to know our Lord Jesus Christ better. Amen. He is the one who saves. May he have all the shining greatness now and forever. Let it be so. Christ is the word of life. He was from the beginning. As we read the Bible, we have heard him and have seen him with our own eyes in our minds. In the Bible, the apostles told us they would have looked at, they have looked at him and they have put their hands on him. Christ, who is life, has shown to them. They saw him, they have told us, and now we preach about the life that lasts forever. He was with the Father, and he has come down to us. So we need to preach what we have heard and seen. We need to share together with all those we can what he knows about the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. If we take his word to the world, they will also be filled with joy, much as we are. As Christians, we are to live in the light. This is what he has told his disciples. They are passing it on to us. God is light. There is no darkness in him. If we say we are joined together with him, but live in darkness, we are telling a lie. We are not living in truth. If we live in light as he is in the light, we share what we have in God with each other. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, makes our lives clean from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we lie to ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we tell him our sins, he is faithful and can de and we can depend on him to forgive us for our sins. Amen. He will make our lives clean from all sin. Let us close in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name. When thy kingdom comes, thy will will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread as we forgive, uh, as we forgive our, as you forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom for now and forever. We know, Heavenly Father, if we follow you and become close to you, that we will be in peace, for that we know you are in control. Amen. Our uh, prayer, I mean our... Um, 216. 216. 216. Our closing hymn is 216. Um, when we all get to heaven. <laughs> if you can please stand and join us. When the roll is hold up yonder.
the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and shed. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll was called up yonder I'll be there. close in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we leave here today, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit down upon us. Send us out into the world this week that we may be strong in faith and that as we come upon people, we are willing to stand up for you and show you in everything we do and say, let us be able to speak out, even if it's as simple as telling them, have a blessed day, so that they know, Father, that you are strong and in this world still today, and that we stand for you, Father, and everything we do is under your direction. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen.